Hello and welcome back to Gapey's Grub. Today we're inside and we're getting ready to extract the last of our blackberry honey for this season. So I thought I would take you on a little journey of how we do that. So here are the frames that we're going to be extracting. Most people will tell you not to take any honey frames off of the hive unless they're capped with wax. Well, for some reason, our bees this year didn't seem to want to cap um, a lot of the frames. This one, most of this side is capped, but you'll see a lot of the frames that we have um, aren't really capped at all, like this one here. There's no capping on either side of this frame, but we went ahead and pulled the the frame anyway because there is a way you can test if it's ready or not. If you take the frame and shake it like that and if no honey comes out then it's good to go. If you see honey drip out when you shake it then it's not dry enough and you should leave it in the hive because if it's too wet then it will ferment on you. We also have a refractometer where we could test the moisture content of our honey. So that is another thing wet that we do to ensure that it's dry enough. And if it does end up being too, too much moisture, then we'll just use it for making mead. All right, so I, one thing I wanted to show you is the difference in the way they cap the frames. So this frame here, I'm not sure if it's easy to see, but you can see um, hopefully that this capping is kind of a darker color. But if we look at this, one of these other frames here, this one isn't fully capped, but um, this is a really light capping. So they call this dry capping, and the other one is a wet capping because it's a darker color. And I'm not sure what causes the bees to do one or the other, but you'll see frames with either a dark color or a light colored capping. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up the extractor with two frames and start spinning it out. But first we wanna take the cappings off of any frames that have cappings on them. And my favorite tool to use is this fork here. So all you do is take the fork and you put it just under the top of the capping and then you just pull it right off. Now there's a lot of different methods for removing the cappings, but I find this method actually removes it pretty well and doesn't take a lot of wax with it. And then I have a bowl next to me over here where I just put the cappings in. So these are all of the cappings from this year. That includes all the maple honey from the spring and the blackberry honey that we just finished. So that's not really a very large amount of cappings compared to previous years because they just didn't want to cap the frames. But we should be able to melt that down and strain off any honey that's mixed in there and use it for making some salves and some soaps and lotions, lots of stuff. But I wanted to show you another tool that some people use that I, I got a few years ago. This is another tool you can use. This has really um, pokey things and what people do is just roll this along the capping and it pokes holes into the cappings and we don't really like using this because a lot of the cappings end up coming out into the extractor and it makes it a lot more difficult for filtering or straining I guess we would call it. So I actually do use this but I use it for making sourdough crackers. So when I make sourdough crackers, most people will use a fork to poke holes in the top of the crackers. But if this works really well just to roll this on top of the crackers and it's a lot faster. So that's what I use it for. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the cappings off of this frame. So it makes it a much quicker process to extract when there's no cappings to remove or very few. So I'm going to go ahead and load this into the extractor. So this is our two frame electric extractor that we actually bought on eBay uh, last year and the years before that we were using a manual hand crank extractor which was really a pain to run and you really needed two people to run it. But this one, since it's so easy um, to run, I can do, use this one 
um, with just one person. So we're just going to put the frame in and line it up. There's some holes or some rods in the bottom and I just line it up the top to the edge of the, the line on the bottom and then I just push it up against against the edge here. So then this thing turns and so we put the other frame um, in the same way on this side. And we want to make sure or try to make sure that we get another frame that's that's got similar amount of honey because if we have too much difference in weights this will get really wobbly. So I'm going to choose this frame here which doesn't have any capping on it so that is going to make it really easy. We just slide it right in and then we have these kind of plexiglass um, pieces for a lid so I'm just going to secure that. It just sits right on top and then we've got our controls over here so right now it's in the zero position and then I'm just going to put some weight on the top and kind of secure it and then I'm going to slowly increase the speed so you can see it's starting to spin so I'm just going to slowly increase it and it goes from 0 to 100 and you don't have to go all the way to 100 if it's if it gets too wobbly I would just leave it um, at a lower speed and let it run its course. So we're going to see how far we can go without it getting too wobbly. So we're at 60 right now. 70. So this is actually pretty fast. It's not too wobbly. Sometimes I'll use both hands to hold it. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it spin for a minute or so. Now we're going to slowly bring the speed down until it's all the way down to zero. Once it stops spinning, we're going to go ahead and take the frames. We're going to take the frames and spin out the other side because we only spun out the honey from one side of these frames. So we got to do the other side. And then we just do the same thing. Slowly increase the speed. So we're going to go up to 70 again, I think. We're at 75 there. Let it go for another minute. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bring it down again. And I like to just remove the frames and kind of inspect and see if I see any honey still in the cells. So I'm looking and it looks pretty dry to me so that looks like a pretty good extraction. So I'm going to go ahead and place these frames into another tote and we're just going to go ahead and fill this back up and spin out some more. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these spun out and then I'll show you what we do next. So another thing I wanted to show you is the bottom of, of this here. So one thing we need to keep an eye on is the level of the honey because if it gets too high it'll start rubbing up against the frames and that's not a good thing because that will really burn out the motor. But we only had seven frames to extract so we didn't have that problem. But if we had maybe ten or more that's something to keep an eye on. So now that our, the honey is extracted, now we need to strain it. So I have a double strainer. We've got a thicker or wider strainer on the top. This will catch all of the, the wax pieces that might have come out during the extraction. And then we've got a smaller, finer strainer on the bottom and this will catch any smaller particles. So we're going to go ahead and add this to the top of a five gallon bucket. And then we're going to open this up here. This is called a honey gate. And once I open that up, the honey is going to flow down into the bucket and get strained. So we're going to just unloose, loosen up this wing nut here. And then flip up the gate. And there goes the honey.
So once the stream slows down a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and tip the extractor to get some of the, the honey that's on the bottom because there is about an inch um, space between the bottom of the extractor and the honey gate. So in order to get the rest down, we have to tip it over or tip it to the side. And actually what we can do is take this part off of the extractor and that'll make this whole process much, much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So really all we need to do is remove these two nuts or whatever these guys are called. So there's one there and then there's one on the other side. So now all we do is lift this right out. And we'll also take the frame holder and I've got a tote right next to me. I'm just going to put that in so it doesn't make a mess. And now we should be able to get that out much easier. That's much better. Now we're going to open the honey gate back up and grab our spatula. So I got pretty much all I can out of the extractor. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that strain overnight just to make sure that all that honey gets a chance to get through the strainer. And then I'm gonna cover that with saran wrap first so that no bugs or anything get in there. We'll be set to get this bottled up tomorrow. All right, we should be all good and strained now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the strainer off. And I like to just take this and put it outside for the bees to, to clean up all the excess honey that's stuck in there. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is when we do our extracting, it can be very, very messy. So we like to put a plastic um, down on the floor and then we also have a piece of plywood on the floor and that's what we keep the extractor on to, to keep it stabilized and Seems to be working pretty well. And if we have any honey drops, then we've got a wet towel on hand that we can use to clean it up so we don't accidentally step on it. That wouldn't be good. Okay, so we've got our bucket here and it's about three fourths of the way full. So I'm gonna go weigh this and see how much honey we got out of those seven frames. All right, so we ended up with 17 pounds of honey from those seven frames. I did weigh the bucket before filling it, so I knew how much was already in there. So it came out to 17 pounds, which is pretty good. Um, could have been a little bit more, but some of the frames weren't completely full. It does look pretty dark in this bucket. Um, it should be much lighter than that once we get it bottled. So we'll have to see how that looks once it's in the jar. All right, it's time to bottle our honey and it's important to ensure that you have something underneath the honey gate because there will be a little bit of honey that will drip down onto the ground. So you want something to catch that because you do not want that in your uh, floor. So I usually bottle my honey in two different jar types. This is called a queen line one pound jar and they do come in I think half pound and maybe even larger, but I stick with these one pound jars and then I also have some quart jars and this holds three pounds of honey. So those are the two primary uh, jars that I use for bottling the honey. So what I do is just hold the jar underneath the honey gate and then we twist our wing nut and open up the gate and out the honey comes. So already you can see that it looks a lot lighter in the jar than it did in the bucket. And even when we bottle between the quart jar and the one pound jar, you'll see the one pound jars actually look lighter than the quart jars. So once it gets towards the top here, I'm going to start slowly closing because I don't want it to get too full and overflow. It does come out pretty fast, especially when there's a lot of honey in the bucket. So I don't fill it all the way to the top. I leave about a half inch or so. And then I'm going to close it. 
And I'm just going to let that slowly drip down until it almost stops. And then I'll switch to the other jar. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing. This one is with the one pound jar, which will go much more quickly. I'm going to grab another one pound or quart jar here and just put it down here on the ground and let that drip into there. So here we have our two jars of honey and you can see it actually does look a little bit lighter than it was in the, the bucket before. But I did want to show you a comparison of the two jars that I bottled. These are both one pound queen line jars. But this honey I bottled earlier in the season just after blackberry really started flowering. And the earlier you harvest the blackberry, the lighter it'll be. Because I think with the, the later harvest of the honey, they have mixed in some wildflower nectar in, which, may, which will darken it up. For some reason, wildflower honey is a little bit darker. So all wildflower honey is, is a mixture of a bunch of different um, flower sources that doesn't have really a primary nectar source. So that is the honey harvest for this year's blackberry and wildflower. And we have one more harvest coming up that's for knotweed, which is flowering right now. And knotweed honey is even darker. I would say it compares to the color of oil. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something about honey harvesting. We'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.